So the obvious question is going to be, how does this compare to the original Roadhouse? It seems like this was made by people who had never actually seen the original Roadhouse, but who had instead watched Andy Dwyer describe Roadhouse in that episode of Parks and Recreations and said, I get the gist, let's just go with that. So Swayze runs, boom, tackles the guy off the motorcycle. Dude's like, you're dead, bro, comes at him. Bad guy, had a gun the whole time. He's like, I'm gonna kill you the old fashioned way. Swayze's like, not this time. That subtext, he doesn't say that. I know writers who use subtext and they're all cowards. It's a ridiculous movie and my favorite part is probably Conor McGregor. Looky here, our own little octagon. What? Who taught you shapes? I understand why it wasn't released in theaters, for how wacky it was. I just think it's an absurdist masterpiece. <laughs> um, like, is it good? Fuck oh, no. no, it's horrendous. But it is like a beautiful design. It's like The Room. It oh, is so like, entertaining, oh, yes. The first half I was thinking, oh man, it's kind of like what Baywatch did with their like reboot yeah. of an 80s franchise where they kind of are making fun of the absurdity of it. Mm -hmm. My gut says there's some bad shit going on over there. And my balls say we need to go over there and check it yeah. out. Your balls said that? Yes, they did. Because my balls say... It's just take it easy right here. Just chill. Why the fuck do your balls sound like three-year-old girls? I don't know, man. That's just how they talk. But they're wise. But it just devolves into <laughs> a series of unrelated scenes where the dialogue honestly feels like it was done off of improv prompts. Just what I talked. This roadhouse is mine. The dialogue doesn't make any sense. No, no, it does. <laughs> be if you view it, that they were using it as indexes for where the scenes are going. <laughs> <laughs> like, characters are saying, it's like, I have to talk to you after what you did to the bookstore. I was already leaving, <laughs> but now I'm staying. And you're like, oh, oh shit. Oh. They just like winged this thing. <laughs> they just showed up and said, do what feels right. <laughs> and it's just a series of actors just vibing. <laughs> it, is, it is horrendous, yet so fucking fun to watch. Hey guys, if you like talking about your favorite movie shows and games, be sure to subscribe and like this channel to help us grow and make more videos like this. So much like Roadhouse, it follows a former fighter, but now he's a UFC fighter, Elwood Dalton. ED is an allegory for erectile dysfunction? I don't know. <laughs> but they do make dick jokes in it. Yes. As he's a, I guess, disgraced UFC fighter because he accidentally killed a guy in the ring. And now he's hired by the owner and proprietor of the Roadhouse. To, to be the bouncer, bouncer. and yeah. fight off a rogue gang that feels the best way to have the roadhouse change hands is not just to kill her, but to just make her life more inconvenient yeah. by making the bar too rowdy for her. And it's a biker gang. Yeah. Can I talk to you guys outside for a second? <laughs> I got some work to do. There's another one. So it does feel like a story lifted out of like an 80s film. Yes. And of course, along the way, he's like the nice guy seeking redemption and he's beating up people at the bar, but taking the time to drive him to the hospital where he meets the beautiful doctor lady who has a mysterious past. Um, everybody in this film has a mysterious past, by the way. Everybody's interconnected. It truly is a tangled web they leave. And so of course, that becomes the love interest, but you know, he, he can't love because of what he did. That lasts like moments before he just kind of relents and goes on a date with her. <laughs> but he doesn't know it's a date. And they do a montage yeah. of him teaching the other bouncers how to become better fighters. Yep. And so that he can help them grow. It's him being the nice guy. And then it gets so bad for these organized criminals that the spoiled rich kid who's running the whole show has his dad come and bail him out by sending in the very notorious Conor McGregor. He gets into a fight with Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal finds out that the lady has a deep secret. She knows why they're trying to get the roadhouse and that they're trying to turn it into track condos. And so he feels betrayed by that. And so he kind of lets them tear down the bar because he's disheartened until Conor McGregor calls him out and they fight. It is kind of a stalemate. There are literally people hanging from the rafters. Dude. <laughs> it is truly like the devolving <laughs> of, society? Of, of society. The enormity of, of their flat brain 
The enormity of their stupidity is just overwhelming. Of course, Dalton walks away just completely disheartened that he's been lied to, and I guess he felt like maybe he believed in her and this project of the, the roadhouse, but now he's just jaded and he says, eh, it's not for me. But they made the mistake of burning down a little bookstore with a, a lovable young lady who's, you know, plucky and has rented him out some books about miscellaneous topics that make him feel more at home in South Florida. At that point, Elba Dalton's had enough. <laughs> <laughs> and he sheds any semblance of trying to not be angry. Now, he has delivered every line up until now as though he's just taken a fistful of bars. He is just Xanax the fuck out. He is very Zen. And he now is telling you that he's angry, but he's just slightly less Zen. <laughs> and immediately starts killing people. Yeah. Like... And yeah. there is a nice homage to the original Roadhouse with the attack on the guy's neck and him drowning in a pool before he decides to go full, like, eco-terrorist and take explosives that they had, I guess, planned for the bar and use it on their yachts. Yeah, because they stole his girlfriend. From there, it just turns into, like... I, honestly, it's like Fast 2 with boats flying yes. through the yeah. air, people being yeah. jettisoned from them to be just just fine. And hand-to-hand -hand yeah. combat. Mm -hmm. um, Even well, though there was tons of other we weapons that could have been used the entire time. And then... It climaxes in this giant fight scene between Conor McGregor and Jake Gyllenhaal's character where they willfully decide to beat each other with their fist until Jake Gyllenhaal gets stabbed by a piece of, like, a wooden shank. Mm -hmm. And then it just occurs to me, like, oh, like, we can just kill each other. We, Which made the entire past ten minutes of just them pummeling each other completely unnecessary. Because Jake Gyllenhaal just picks up a fucking, his own, of course he yanks out his own you know, skewer that's in his hip and, you know, stabs Conor McGregor multiple times, killing him. There's a character who introduces himself as Big Dick. I have a very great friend in Rome called Biggest Dickus. Yeah. I don't, I honestly can't tell. Is this supposed to be a comedy like Baywatch was? Or were they trying to be serious? Because there's no way they're trying to make mm -hmm. a serious film. Okay, There's so actual jokes in here that... Are they you? know we're absurd. Yes. Conor McGregor is banging Jake Gyllenhaal's <laughs> head off a piano. Jake Gyllenhaal stops, damage suspended, says, This piano's out of tune. Sounds pretty good to me. And that's Roadhouse. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? what? Dude. I don't know what I watched, but if you asked me to watch it again, I'd, I'd go watch it again. Yeah. It was But no, ridiculous. I 100% agree that it was definitely not made for a theatrical release. It was made for fucking streaming. It had all the charm of like a tax write-off. Under the right circumstances, a producer could make more money with a flop than he could with a hit. And the actors are good, so you know this was like a choice. Oh yeah. Like I remember watching Keanu Reeves in that movie Replicants. Oh. Yeah. And you're like, I know Keanu Reeves is a better actor than this. So this is like a choice. <laughs> like they're hamming it up, doing a bad job on purpose. Jay Gyllenhaal's character, it's like they said, hey, we want you to look like you did in Southpaw, but we want you to deliver all your lines like a mashup of Donnie Darko and Bubble Boy. Oh, well, that's hardly fair. Why, well, it's not fair. <laughs> oh, oh, I just slapped you. Are you all right? What? It's insane. The, the dialogue is like 1980s retro. It feels like it was recorded in another room, and it just evolves to, like, commando. Dylan! You son of a bitch. <laughs> like, like they have no trust that people are going to be able to understand what's going on if you watch the scenes. Oh. So they just tell you. They're actively narrating what is going on. People are saying things like, are you going to kill me too? Like you did that other guy that... Ah, you're gonna kill me now? I thought we had to be friends first. Think about that if you use Conor McGregor. He's obviously banging some dude's wife jumps down from the balcony, butt naked, but then proceeds to rob a dude, steal a suit, and set a complete bazaar on fire for no reason. It's like, if you're willing to set a bazaar on fire and rob people, why not just beat the guy up? Like, Peter, it's sense. supposed to add to the fact that he's psychotic. He makes I get no that, sense. Right? He was so hammered up, I love But no, his acting, dude, he's on the fucking phone. And he's like, yeah, yes, I'm on my way. <laughs> and they literally have the person on the phone talking at the same fucking time. <laughs> yeah, it honestly felt like they went too realistic. And they said, hey, what's better than acting? Because maybe Connor can't act a yeah. phone call. Let's just call him on the phone. But you realize when you see people on the phone, 
one half of a conversation is almost unintelligible. Yeah. It's yeah. just a series of affirmations. So you're able to uh-huh. then hear uh-huh. the other side, but then they ma- overlap, and I'm like, this isn't a fucking real conversation. Conor McGregor delivers every line like it's a mic drop, even if it's just the most <laughs> innocuous <laughs> thing. Yeah. It was, it was that, phenomenal. That's fucking, they, yes. they also find a way to have him work the word notorious in there. Yeah. It felt like he demanded it for branding purposes that we'd be able to use the term the most notorious fighter in the world well dude even when he's like i haven't been clubbing in forever it's been a while since i've been clubbing oh. <laughs> i was like bro it, it also his accent kept going in between like for me it was like going between jamaican and irish it's like cars like stay in your wheelhouse man you don't know how to do, bro, just do your accent. own accent <laughs> do irish it's intimidating man you're good you know he walks around half the film with a golf club yeah smashing shit up just to get into a fight and just not use the golf club against the most dangerous enemy yeah and it was just like the most absurd thing. Like, you've just used it to beat up a bunch of scrubs in the fucking bar, but when Jake Gyllenhaal's Elwood Dalton, the, the, the notorious, has killed a guy in the ring fighter, and, and then you're like, I don't club. need this shit. Yeah. It's like, uh, I feel like the most pro- appropriate time to actually have a weapon. Like, maybe also, the guy is a murderer. He holds a golf club like he's never seen golf. <laughs> <laughs> it's like if they told him, hey, this is a baseball bat. He goes, yeah, looks, looks like it to me. Whatever. Yeah, sure. It's fucking phenomenal. And then he had to have had it written in his script. I'm not going to wear clothes 90% of the time. He swims back to shore in one of the scenes wearing his Hawaiian shirt. By the way, we're wearing the Hawaiian shirts in honor of this masterpiece. Yeah. Um, just it's, to show up from a car ride not no wearing shirt. it. Like, so he, he swims carried down by this like Wait. water-soaked <laughs> shirt. But then in the car ride ever says, no, fuck it. I need to stretch down. it. Also, Conor McGregor, like what a testament to just the power of humans to overcome the odds. Because the fact that he was able to act in this film with what I can only assume is a terminal case of invisible lat syndrome was <laughs> phenomenal. I mean, he walks around the entire My time. Bro. He's having to take corners in like three point turns. He's just fucking, <laughs> it's insane. No, but for real, like even when he got to the house and he was like. Oh no, I can't see what this is about. Where the fuck is everyone? Yeah, it's like we get it, Connor. You're looking bigger since you retired from the UFC, but not that big. Not, I mean, it's it's more than the UFC days. It's like the way he yeah, walks. He's walking like, he's like, like such a, a he's carrying, He honestly looks like he's carrying two suitcases at all times. Like, oh, oh my god, in that train to Georgia, you gotta go and get out. <laughs> phenomenal, phenomenal. <laughs> there was there was clearly no director. It was just the actors directing themselves and. Delivering lines and turning to each other and saying, "Hey, how that?" And another actor go, "Yeah, sound good to me. Sounded good from where I am." Yeah. <laughs> because the number of overdubs they had to do, where you could clearly tell that they had filmed it, mm-hmm. and it just wasn't loud enough. The film was like Speed Two, the one where they're on the boat. <laughs> You know that they know that it's going to be bad, and so they just kind of lean in, and everybody's <laughs> like, we're all getting Razzie's dog, so. It was talking about how obscure and how absurd final act of the film is. It goes from like a modern, like, I'm protecting this bar to full on, like, anarchy by the end of the film. Jake Gyllenhaal abandons the whole, I won't kill people, and he just engages in like minor acts of terror. <laughs> like, <laughs> Dude, like... And so it felt like the tone of a Fast and Furious movie, like the dialogue was yeah. delivered kind of like a Fast That's and the Furious very, movie. Very on, yeah, um, on point. At one point, the love interest kisses him and Jake Jonah is almost like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like somebody said in an improv class, I need you to act out like she just knocked your socks off. And he's like, wow. <laughs> this felt like, and it's always sunny in Philadelphia when they do like the Lethal Weapon 5. Riggs, Murta, bad news, fellas. Hey, Captain. Turns out another person just died from tainted tap water. Turns out someone tainted, someone tapped the tainted water supply. With the cuts and the edits where it feels like a student project that got (laughs) just enough money to get a couple real actors and con them into getting on set. Um, But it was a lot of fun. Yes. Yeah, and what is this film if not a tale of the indomitable human spirit? Um, it truly is an exploration into the will to persevere. Um, <laughs> is it good? No. no. It's very, very not good. <laughs> but you should absolutely watch it. It is so much fun. Because it's not trying to be good. 
There's no way. There's no fucking way. It's they could have just not delivered some of those lines if they wanted to be good. Yes. And so it There's... does. It does feel like Baywatch, where they understand that the underlying premise of this movie is so inherently ridiculous that the original is kind of ridiculous. You know, yeah. instead of trying to do that and make it serious, in which case it will obviously be a joke and, and probably fail. Let's just be in on the joke and and play it up. up. Yeah, yeah, play it up. Let's fucking lean in. I get the distinct feeling that the actors on set had the best time of their lives. <laughs> I like, know Conor McGregor did. Yeah. Oh, bro. He's so funny. And not intentionally so. <laughs> like, you get the feeling that Conor McGregor's waiting to get, like, his Oscar nomination. <laughs> He's delivering lines, pouncing on people off of bars, and, like, you you can tell that. He's, like, just clearly is maybe reading it off of a cue card. Um, they sound new to him. But yes, those are just our thoughts. Let us know in the comments what you thought about Roadhouse, and we'll catch you in the comments. Bye.